The appendix can erupt for many different reasons. The book is punctured like a little bean. <laughs> and erupt your appendix and your liver until you're dead. But what they have done, the appendix, the certain organs in the body that they don't tell you about. They don't tell you what they're there for. I mean, it all ties into the hippocampus, or what they call hippocampus area of the brain. All right? And once you have organ in there, that organ in there charged all of your higher senses, your divine, your connection with the most high. That was surgically removed from you. They named you, as they say in the Bible, and they moved your divinity so you cannot walk and talk with God anymore. When they, when they moved one gland, if that gland like the liver, the liver and the kidney work together. So if the liver goes bad, then the... Well, that's why appendix and tonsils go bad. Because we are vocal people. Our power is in our voice. That's why they say Jesus has a voice, the sound of many words. We can take the walls of Jericho down by our voice. So uh, the first thing they try to do is get your tonsils out. Then they tell you you don't need your appendix. All of these things work with the fluid to deal with your over soul, not your underbody. Uh, if I, I know, and a appendix will not stop you from having psychic power. Because once a man and a woman come together and become one flesh, organs that are damaged in him can be used from her by a grace. We extend to each other. This is why when a couple has been hanging out together, they start to walk alike. People start saying, that's your sister, you say that told me her. <laughs> my wife looks like Bowser. And they ask me, is that my sister? Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Because we walk, we're together all the time. So we walk alike. I get ready to say something she said. I'm driving along, I'm going to think something. She said, uh, why don't we just pull over? I'm going to say, well, I'm the one. <laughs> That's the way I want it. Yeah. That's the way it should be. God damn. That's how y'all should be. God damn. And then when, as you're starting to get sick, he will feel it. As she's starting to get sick, you will feel it. And God you damn. can take your vitality. And you can embrace the person you love. And you can hold them. And y'all can grieve together. And you can rejuvenate. Damn it all. Right. <laughs> the power of ish, true love. I, I say ish because love in English is a messed up word. We have our own ish. You have the power. You understand that? Become one. It says in scripture. Cling unto your wife and y'all become one flesh. So if the Bible says, if a man and wife, woman come together to become one flesh, can you not share the same fleshly organ? Yes. You share the same heart when you're in love. You know what happens sometimes? You look at an adult thing. Husbands and wives can lay in the bed next to each other, and one or the other got to jump up because the heart gets too loud. <laughs> he can actually hear his heart and think he's going to have a heart attack. <laughs> or she can hear her heart go, <clears throat> Oh, you got to go to the heart. You're beating too fast. No, it's not just sharing energy from your mate, and you're getting a double portion of electric nerve centers being sent to activate that chakra or that gland or that hope that will see. And it makes you think you're going to have a heart attack. As soon as you get up out of bed, you go, oh, yeah. All you have to do is get away from her. <laughs> go away from him. That's the power of love. We got such beautiful power. We don't need four women standing around us just because we got the horn. <laughs> horn, the devil's horn. We need one good loyal wife, one good loyal husband, both doing their part, and life is beautiful. Right. Take it from a man who was a single woman who was a I was looking in the air for a minute, and it was miserable to me and the women I was messing up. And it took us all nowhere. I've never been happier than I am now. When I have a wife and a friend and a buddy, some of them laugh, we laugh at the same joke. We like, no, we don't like the same joke. She eats some funny stuff. That's the yeah. funny some funny stuff. And call it good. Try it, try it, try it. So we dip it in. And we also dip it with the nails like this. When they come at your face when you're driving, and they look over and they see a bump on your face. <laughs> and you're on the interstate doing 80 miles an hour, and they decide they want to bust a bump on your face. <laughs> they say, get off of me. <laughs> there are those funny, magical things that you can't explain. Life, brother. Y'all know that. The moment 
you're in the house, you need her, he can't find her. Yeah. And like right now, I need them like all of a sudden, the water's leaking and I can't do it. <laughs> right? As soon as I figure out, she's going to say, I love you. know what y'all was so in tune at that point, that she was on the other end doing something else. And one time I said, what's up? I was a kid, because one of the kids was almost one of the summer, so they say, wow, it's magical, the power of love. Yeah. It's powerful. All you young people that don't have somebody to love, find someone to love. Kind of Anyway, find someone to love. Having your little spat, get rid of them spat. We need each other now more than ever to become Amen. one flesh, to work together. Oh, yeah. And believe me, anytime there's an argument, either both of y'all are right, both of y'all are wrong, one of y'all is right, the other one is wrong, and it can go on like that. <laughs> the smartest one says, guess what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe you're right. Let's not fight. Well, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. don't ever go to bed. Fight. Don't get stupid. Don't do it. <laughs> Solve the argument before you go to bed. You know why he's bloody? Or why are you always accusing my brother because he's a flirt? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Y'all want to stand up? Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. You know why we men are flirt? Step on in. Because you women have ended up into the order of dogs. You're the first to say, all oh, you men ain't nothing but dogs. You didn't say it so much, now we believe it. <laughs> I don't want to change for you. And when you see me go out my way and look down at the mall, don't say to me, I'll see you looking. <laughs> Better will say, looking at what? <laughs> I'm looking down because I want to respect you. Because we're trying to learn respect and love of our appreciation of our woman again. My woman does not walk behind me, she walks beside me. I don't need no woman tail behind me. I need a right there beside me. Someone I can lean on when I need help. Well, y'all know me as a teacher. I'm also a man, a father and a husband. And it's time when I need somebody to lean on. It's time when the world is heavy for me. You can't imagine being me, hated by people that love you because you want to help them. But I spend my time with you. But our cars don't do that. You get on the internet, you can talk to me, I'll talk to you on the internet. But our cars don't do it. Get him on to talk to you about put some minutes on. <laughs> I come down that audience and I walk with you. I talk with you. I sit with you. I socialize with you. I don't put myself above you in any way. I don't ever want you thought of as that. You may respect what I teach you, but that's about it. Respect it. Look at it again, and respect it. Look at it again, and respect it again. Look at it again, and respect it again. And that's all I want to do. I want to be your brother. I want to be your friend. I want our family to know each other. I want you to see my kids and understand. If you see my daughter or son doing something wrong, you stop. The same way I try to write, if I see y'all doing something wrong, I stop. And y'all trying to have kids stay get in touch with me, I'll tell you how to do it. There's a certain way to do it, you know, but it's telling our people you prevent it. That's why y'all can't have it. Mm -hmm. Y'all people have a problem. I'm not telling you nine-year-olds and ten-year-olds get married. I'm saying, you, you young boys and young girls out there, you in this room today, walk outside and meet some people. Don't leave there without meeting each other, shaking hands and talking to each other and socializing. How many of y'all try to get back next week to see? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be looking for you. I'll be kicking out the idea. And then we're waiting for the summer so we can take it out this hot room outside and have, you know, what color folks do? Some food, too. We never had y'all. I don't know. Some of y'all are not over here. Not today. Not tomorrow. So we never had y'all. We don't need to be Grandmother was like, grandmother had plastic on his head. <laughs> <laughs>
And that's why they have so many problems. Because electricity is unpredictable. Right? Okay, everybody. Yes, I'll do that. With the what? The unk? Yes, the unk of our symbol represents you and your crucifixion, not Christ. And it says that on a picture that we put out before we put the jewelry out of it. The picture says, your su our suffering, crucifixion, our suffering. You have been crucified. You have a, 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 a reef on your brain with thorns, killing you from thinking. You have nails in your hands, keeping you from doing it. Nails in your feet, keeping you from walking. And when they stab you, blood don't come out now. Water and vinegar comes out, because you've been tickled. So it's symbolic of what they've done to us. And Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. For with all the suffering that we've been going through, we are indeed on a cross. Right. And even when I put the hump there and not the, the uh, Roman cross, is because the hump is a symbol of the key to eternal life. Something that we will get in or out of the body. Because you can kill the body, but not the soul. Right. Yes. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you both said, I just want to. <laughs> Uh, come in with Mary. Uh, because if she didn't know that, if she didn't know that, uh, I want you to, I don't know if that's Mr. Mayor. You know, it's so amazing because we had, I had to answer that question on the internet just last week, right? And Dr. Stevens trying to figure out if they would came into Mary and Dr. Lock and they went into her and put the bed, then he had a sex with the coffee cup, mm -hmm. then how did Tam Mother get into her deed? Right? right? All right, because what they did is they cryogenically preserved Tammuz's sperm. They can do that. And they, they inject it into the prostrate gland where the similar vessel is that produces the semen of the man inside Gabriel. And that's why it says Gabriel came to Mary to give her something. The Quran used the word Wahaba, to give her something. Because he was bringing with him someone else's gene the way they do artificial insulation. But the elders have mastered it without a needle tapping the gene. They now inject it into the man, and the man ejaculated into a woman. So Gabriel Mitchell brought his cousin's gene, Tammuz, and put it into Mary, and she gave birth to the Holy Ghost, or what they refer to as the Holy Ghost of God, or a supernatural being, a son of God. And even God himself at times. That Mary didn't realize that she had given birth to God. That's why she said, this is Joseph's son. And that's why she doubted Jesus for many days. And one time Jesus was healing people, and Mary walked by, and the disciples said, Behold thy mother. And thy brother, and Jesus looked up on the mountain, mad at his mother, and said, My mother and brother are those who believe as I believe. Right. He denied her at once because she was like Jesus. He's taking it a step too far with this you are God stuff. Those Sanhedrin and Pharisees are going to kill you, son, and I love you. <laughs> you understand? She'll get touched, you'll get affected because she did not want to see her son die. That's no other mother, that's why she was at the base of the cross. When she looked up and saw it wasn't Jesus, her and Mary, Jesus' wife, Mary Magdalene, who bore him three children, they left. Jesus had kids. Jesus married Mary Magdalene. The, what, the wedding in Canaan was Jesus' wedding. I got a whole book on it, proving that that was his wedding. Ask yourself, why was Jesus and his disciples invited to a wedding of people who they didn't mention the Bible? And ask yourself, why did the servant go to Mary and say there's no wine? What did Mary have to do with someone else's wedding? And ask yourself, why would Jesus make the wine? And then ask yourself, after Jesus makes the wine, why did the man say he saved the best wine of his wedding for last? If it wasn't Jesus' wedding. Why would Jesus spend the night in Mary Magdalene's house? When he was in the house and Martha was mad because Martha was fixing the food and Mary Magdalene was sitting at Jesus' feet in the living room. Lazarus is sister. And she said, at least help me prepare your man's food. <laughs> it's in your Bible. 
Why was Jesus on his way home? Right? On his way home when Lazarus was supposed to be dead to the area where, what, he lived. When he came out of his house and he cut the fig tree because he had left his disciples and he went and spent the night in Mary Magdalene's house. When he came out of his house and of the fig tree, he cut his brother down. Where was he at that night? Now you have to understand Judaic teachings to know certain things. One would be that Jesus would not spend the night in Mary of Magdalene and Martha's house, even as Lazarus' friend. That's against the law for a Hebrew law. For a grown man to spend the house, spend the night in the house of a Hebrew family who's not related to Secondly, how could Mary of Magdalene come to the tomb in the morning with the intention of washing Jesus' naked dead body without being able to be exposed to his private part? which is a Judaic ritual of washing the body with spices and sprinkling things and then rotting it. How was she going to do that? And when she said to Jesus, have you seen my master in the Bible? It's the word husband. The word that you use for master is the same word as husband, just like when Sarah said, Abraham is my master. You follow that? She came there looking for her husband. And the disciples, the pump, were somewhere off hiding. And she's the only one with the courage, a woman, to go to the Sagan. And when she got there, she met two Essenes, Order of Melchizedek, dressed in white robes. And they asked her, who do you see? She said, my master, which the Greek says, my husband. And she, and they said, why do you seek for the living amongst the dead? Why are you looking for somebody that's alive here where people die? You know? They say he was put inside of a tomb and they rolled the stone and closed the tomb. Right? Spirit can go through tombs. Can't they? Spirit can go through rocks, otherwise you Christians wouldn't have no shroud of terror you trying to say Jesus couldn't do. So the spirit can go through a rock, so why do they have to roll the stone up it? Why did God say somebody would have stone up it? If Jesus was a spirit inside, he went he would walk right through the rock. Somebody had to walk out of it. There's a certain chemical. Now, that wasn't Jesus, but let's talk about the man who was crucified for a man. Because his story is in your Bible also. And it covers it quite well. When they give you the story of Judas killing himself, they play a trick on your mind, it's embarrassing, and you fall. They say after Jesus got arrested, Judas was so depressed for what happened, right, that he went by himself and took the coin, the gold coins, and threw them down, and went down a rope, and found a tree, and threw the rope over the tree, and if he did all this by himself, who wrote the dog on story? And he was by himself, and nobody was there, and who wrote the story? Is that true or what? They lied. They made the story up, but they couldn't account for Judas the next day either. The two people they wouldn't have been able to account for is Jesus and Judas. Another part of the Bible says they threw his body off a cliff and, bu- and busted asunder. They made a toy of a somebody's dead body up so people wouldn't recognize it. Now, who was that? That's what they wanted you to think was Judas. Judas was on the cross. Not Jesus. Jesus told them he would not go to the cross. And then he went to God and he fell on his face and he prayed. He said, oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass by me. Not of my will, but that thou will be done. And the angel appeared to him, the Bible says, with assurance. What does that mean? And then Jesus went back to the disciples who were sleeping again. <laughs> And got them up and said, the hour has come. I'm ready. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And he went and he waited. And at night time, with lanterns, not glass, not, not lights, no street lights, lanterns and clubs. The Romans, the Sanhedrin, and some of the rabbis and Levi came out to get Jesus. Right? They were coming to arrest Jesus. Did they know Jesus? Mm-hmm. Not. No, they didn't know. How do you know they didn't know? 
because they had to have Judas kiss him to recognize him. So they were going to arrest the man that they didn't even know he looked like. They said, you go kiss him so we know who he is. And that's about the people Judas. Don't be afraid to tell the truth now, because I'm going to go If I don't follow your Bible, say, Doc, that's not what it says. Let me. I'm going right through it with you. All right, now, Jeff. So when they find Jesus and his disciples, a strange thing happens. Jesus said, who do you seek? And they said, Jesus. He said, I am Jesus. And they fell on the ground. The Bible says, literally, they turned around backwards and fell on the ground. Everybody. <laughs> Why? Why did they all fall on the ground when Jesus said, I am Jesus? If they all came to arrest him, they had clubs and landed and armies and soldiers, and they were about coming to get this man, and he said, I am he. And they turned around and fell on the ground. Go back and read the Bible tonight. Proctor Landon and Esther said. Jesus was illuminated like when he transfigured himself. They saw the power of him. He said again, who do you seek? They said, Jesus. And one of Jesus' disciples in his place and took out a sword and cut off the ear of the servant side. Right? Right. That's right. And Jesus, in the front of everybody, bent down, picked up the man's ear, put it back on his head, healed it. You understand? And you tell me, all the soldiers and Pharisees that were watching that didn't believe he was the son of God at that point. You tell me they didn't recognize God then. He put the man's hair back on. You put yourself there. Put yourself back there. I put myself back there many times and say, what would I do? I know one thing. If he put his hair back on, I couldn't do nothing to him. I couldn't hurt him. Tell him on the cross and make no difference. He just put my hair back on. <laughs> Come on with it. You with me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> The betrayer got betrayed. Of course, they turned to Judas and said, Judas, you better have a real good one now. And that's why they say that Joseph of Arimathea, you know him? And they were Jesus, the secret disciples of Jesus, and they were Pharisees and St. Jesus. So some of the police who came and get Jesus was his own father. In the rain. And when they saw the power of Jesus, they took Judas. They knew they couldn't touch Jesus. And the disciples started a fight to call a detour, and it said they all ran. And Jesus told them, you're going to deny me three times. Later, they went to see Jesus arrested. They peeked in the courtroom and saw Judas. And they said, they all were his followers. And he said, hey, you. Are you one of his fathers? The disciples said, I know not the man. I don't know him. Right. I know everybody knew Jesus. Mm -hmm. I know everybody knew Judas. They said, I don't think all the disciples said, like if they were coming to crucify me, and, they, and you looked in the room and saw they had grabbed Bilal Philip for action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they asked him and said, is that him? What did you say? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crucify me. <laughs> As they say, which is Judas, what did he ask him? Do you make yourself out to be the son of God? For God, he said, you say so. <laughs> That's not what Jesus said when they asked him. And he said, I and the Father are one. When you see me, you see the Father. When they were doing the folks who say God to kill him, they said, for your works, we don't kill you. Before that stuff, when you say you God, we want to kill you. And Jesus said, this is not written in your law, in the Psalms. I did not say you are God. He didn't want at that point. Jesus never denied saying he was the son of God, oh God, and found a like his father, living his father, when he said it in the court, and the people in Nazareth, the child is going over the cliff, what he said. In his own hometown, that's what he said. A, a prophet is without honor in his own home. I come to my own, my own people. Now, you learned something in Nazareth like he denied it when he told him who he was. But Judas said, I didn't do it. You said I am him. You said that. So, Judas, who thought he was doing the right thing because he thought Jesus was a false prophet, he thought he was living in a false prophet in the hands of the Jews, he found out 
that these have been selected. How does it happen? It happens like the story of Abraham. Remember Abraham? Abraham was supposed to sacrifice his son Isaac. But there was a scapegoat. They went and got sacrificed instead of Isaac. Judas was a scapegoat. He got sacrificed instead of Christ. You follow the thing? Hey, and when the day came, Jesus was seen, the righteous St. John, the 21st chapter, Jesus was seen by his disciples while they were fishing. And he was standing on a boat naked, it says in the Bible. He had to his clothes off and said, Behold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding, it's like uh, John 21, read the chapter 9, we go home. And the disciples thought it, they were so happy, they were saying, which one of us do you love the most? And he said, John is my beloved, John, son of Debbie. Remember that? Mm-hmm. He was there physically, he broke bread with them. Jesus came back, here's another touching one. Jesus came back to an upper room. The Muslims make the mistake of saying, he said, Salaam Alaikum. And he said, Shalom Lekum. He was even not Muslim. Shalom Lekum. The Bible says he said, Assalamu Alaikum. Therefore, Jesus must be a Muslim. He didn't say, Assalamu Alaikum. He said, Peace be He said, Shalom Lekum. Okay? My Shalom. <laughs> Jesus came to the room in the upper room with these dollars. Behold the man. Lick And then he disappeared for eight full days. The next time they saw him was then to verify to Thomas that he was still alive physically, so he came in and said, Shalom Lechem, I'm hungry, give me some meat. Thomas said, let me feel your wound, you see if you feel any good. He said, yes, feel my side, feel my hand, it's me, feel, brush your hand in my wound. What wound? The wound obtained from the fight in the garden. Touch me, see I'm real, I'm physical. What did he tell Mary and Magdalene at the Picasso? When she got ready to touch it, she said, don't touch me. Before I have not ascended unto my father, but I said, yes, I am not a holy ghost yet, I'm still a man. Don't touch me. He's still dressed as a gardener. That's why she said, Lord, I thought she was a gardener. How could she say to you, Jesus was a gardener? And she's looking right at him. She's the one who watched his feet. He brought her out of home. I mean, she was, she loved him, came before him, fed him, bathed him, washed his head all and made Judas mad. How could she look right at him in the day, go to the day like the morning and not like a night? If he didn't have one to stop. To keep from being here. So the hour has not come as yet. It was all premature. I didn't know on and on about the Jesus story. <laughs> but, uh, no, Jesus, the real one was not crucified. Judas was crucified. And Judas cried from the cross. Eli, Eli, let us the best in me. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And he was quoting Psalm 22. He was quoting him. Open your Bible to Psalm 22, and you'll read the same thing we've been there before, right? That was David. Read the book of Psalms, and you will find out Psalm 22 that David was crucified. And literally says, even by this, they passed my hands and feet, and passed, and they thrust my side, they cast lots for my garments, like they brush on me. Not Calvary, not the vessel. In another old city, David was crucified. The story you're reading about Jesus was the story of David. Then get to the book to come out. You follow? I don't know more. Yeah. So let me say to y'all, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.